So one, I'll call the meeting to order. We'll pause for a moment of silent reflection. Do the Pledge of Allegiance. Tim Thompson, are you using the pledge? I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks. Thank Willie Bowles, you lead us in a roll call and determination of quorum since we've got a couple on Zoom. All righty. Jerry Burmeister. Here. Brian Williams. Here. Corey Hall. Present on Zoom. Steve Danny. Here. Marissa Skaggs. Here. Five out of five, we're all here. First order of business is approval of the minutes from the September meeting. Those are in the Google Drive. Any questions, comments, concerns regarding those minutes? If there aren't any changes, I will entertain a motion for approval of the minutes as presented. Motion. Second. I have a motion and a second for approval of the minutes from the September meeting. We need a roll call vote on everything, right, Jeff? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Willie, will you lead us in a roll call vote since you have a motion and a second? Okay. Brian Williams. Yes. Corey Hall. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Steve Danny. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. First order of business tonight after the approval is a presentation from the Madison County Council of Governments on the ICC-9 corridor plan. Thanks for joining us tonight, guys. All right. Thank you. You all hear me? Good. Good evening, everyone. My name is Ralph Holmes. I am the principal uh, community planner for the Madison County Council of Governments, and I'm here to talk to you all tonight about the I-69 corridor study, uh, what it is, and basically how you guys can make use of this uh, big resource that we put together for everybody. Without further ado, we'll go on and into it. One side, please. Uh, so what is the I-69 corridor study? It is a study that examines everything along I-69 between exits 214 and 226 in a one mile buffer north and south of the interstate. As you can imagine, this is a very large and expansive study area that contains a lot of moving parts and a lot of municipalities are involved within this study area. So there's a lot of stuff within the document. Slide, please. Uh, so primarily, the uh, study was a project initiated to guide planning improvements and transportation improvements in this corridor over the next decade and provide some key analyses about the corridor itself, all of the existing conditions, and then utilize that analysis so that people can make informed recommendations and decisions about key infrastructure in the corridor moving forward into the future as this area develops into the future. Um, it serves to kind of broaden the collective understanding of planning issues within the corridor. Uh, we perform extensive data analysis on a lot of stuff within this large study area, so that's all included in this document. Um, we start the analysis by looking at each of the interchanges and how they relate to the communities and how they relate to each other along this very long corridor, because there's different issues depending on which intersection you're at, uh, and how we can start tying these interchanges together to form kind of a cohesive network of corridor in this county. And then we take all of that so that we can develop a wide range of solutions, goals, objectives, and minimum standards on very many topics throughout this document. This planning process, no, no. This planning process took place over about a year and a half. Um, it was very extensive. Uh, we started back in February of 23, and our policy board just approved this document as of our last policy meeting, which would have been in October. Um, so now it's uh, available to the public, and we're here talking to all of the member community boards who this is new to, uh, but certain staff in uh, each of the communities was aware of it, which I'll get into next. So we did have a steering committee for this plan. Uh, it was uh, made up of six different entities that had representatives on the board. Hannah was in on this. Uh, we also had members from LaPel, Anderson, uh, Ingalls, Madison County took part in this, as well as INDOT, because, you know, it is I-69, it's their road. Um, 
meetings. We had a total of nine different meetings over the course of the year and a half, six of which were standard steering committee meetings where everybody got together and we talked about the document, how it was going. And then we had three focus group meetings where we talked about specific targeted uh, uh, topics such as transportation related issues, sense of place or administrative problems that would occur within the corridor. Uh, so what came out of these steering committee meetings, one of the main things was that all the members of the steering committee felt that there should be sort of a memorandum of understanding included in the document that all of the communities within the corridor could kind of sign on to. This memorandum of understanding is primarily towards facilitating coordination between all the community, all of the communities in the corridor for large infrastructure projects or things that cross municipal boundaries. Um, so we wrote that, a draft of that that's included in the appendix of the document. Um, we also have input from all the communities about our goals and objectives, things that some communities wanted, other communities didn't want. So we found a happy middle ground between everybody that was playing in our study area. Uh, and then we used all of their input as a whole to kind of generate our solutions in this document. Next slide, please. So it is a very weighty 200 page document. I'm not gonna go over all of it tonight for you guys. I'm just gonna cover some of the high notes. Uh, we discovered some relevant planning <laughs> issues. These highlights are here on this slide. The corridor is multi-jurisdictional in nature that presents a lot of intricacies and unique problems that uh, we talk about and ways that you could solve or address the, the multi-jurisdictionalness of the projects that could occur within the corridor. Um, we note uh, that there are numerous utility jurisdictions within the corridor uh, that also have their own kind of problems as well, depending on which utility jurisdiction you're working in. These present problems or issues for economic development, especially if there's capacity issues for these uh, utility jurisdictions. Um, we looked at the land use extensively within the corridor. Uh, we met with each of our community's planning departments within the corridor and talked about their desired future for land uses within the corridor. And then we took that, did extensive data modeling on what their desired futures would mean for things like employment or new housing developments within the corridor. So we took all of that and we constructed, uh, uh, sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. We also looked at uh, construction standards and regulations across many different agencies. Uh, these were all dispersed willy-nilly everywhere, but they also were very highly technical in the sense. So we took that technical information and distilled it down into sort of like a field guide, uh, a, a much more user-friendly version of construction standards that uh, could be a resource to the communities to sort of get a sense of what the minimum required engineering design for a lot of different topics are. So that's included in the document as well. Um, Another key thing that came out of the study is that sometimes the LPAs don't necessarily know how to coordinate with NDOT about some things. So there is another uh, resource in there for LPAs to sign a memorandum of understanding to coordinate with NDOT. We include that in the document. And then lastly, we came out of that is that sometimes the LPAs don't know how to coordinate with each other sometimes about things. So we make recommendations about how to increase coordination. Next slide. I'm going to go briefly through all of the sections of the document. Again, it's a huge document, so it's not going to be all of it tonight. Much like a comprehensive plan, we do an extensive overview of the existing conditions within the corridor. It contains all relevant current information about things like demographics, socioeconomic metrics, as well as uh, economic development metrics and stuff like that. We use all of this analysis to establish a very clear baseline of all of these data points so that you can see clearly as decision makers what things are today. And if you implement policies and then you can track how these metrics are changing in the future, pretty handy. It also enables all of you to effectively plan for the future if you're seeing these predictions laid out as nice, clear data. We break the document into six different categories, those being transportation, administration, land use, economic development, sense of place, and sustainability, where we cover a lot of our environmental recommendations. Next slide. So here's a, uh, a spread of the document. As you'll note here, it is in a landscape. Uh, so if you go and print this out on your own, Hannah has a copy of it in your G drive. We should print it in landscape, not in portrait. We've had problems with people doing that in the past. 
do that because we wanted to be able to give everybody nice big maps that you can see all the stuff that we're talking about in. Uh, but this is an existing conditions section, and we talk about on this spread here, uh, police, fire protection, and the utilities that we examine in the document, much like a comp plan. <laughs> Briefly about our focus areas, we identified lots of goals, objectives, and minimum standards. Transportation, we identified five goals and 25 objectives and uh, 10 minimum standards. Administration is about governance within the corridor. We identified two goals, seven objectives, one minimum standard. Land use, pretty self-explanatory. We identified five goals, 19 objectives, and two minimum standards. For economic development, we identified four goals, 16 objectives, and there weren't really any applicable minimum standards for economic development. There's no guidebook on how to do economic development, so there are no minimum standards for that. Uh, we identified five uh, goals and 16 objectives and eight minimum standards for sense of place, and then eight goals and 23 objectives and eight minimum standards for sustainability. Next slide, please. So here's an example of the goals and objectives section of the document. For everybody's convenience, we color coded all of our key sections. This is blue. So if you're in the transportation section, it's blue. Anything that is blue in the document, you know, is related to transportation. Also, for everybody's convenience, we include uh, key FHWA goals and smart growth principles. So if you're going for a grant in the future uh, for any of these agencies, you need to know a hey, this uh, transportation goal is going to achieve this FHWA goal. Pretty handy thing to have. And then in our nice big blue bars, we have the documents itself, goals and objectives. Slide. Much like a comp plan, these kind of goals and objectives can be said to be either low hanging, easy to implement, quick fruit, they're short term kind of goals, or more ambitious, far reaching, long term goals. Um, I just have some examples here on the slide, but one of them is adopt access control ordinances, limiting the number of curb cuts on all facilities above major collectors if you've not already done so. That's a pretty easy thing to do. You just enact an ordinance. One of the more long-term ambitious ones would be evaluate land use to determine prime areas near transit connections for residential developments. This is talking mostly about TOD related development. It's kind of hard to do if you don't have any transit in your community right now, but we want to be future focused and future thinking that someday there could be transit slide. So unlike a comp plan, we looked at minimum standards. I said these uh, dispersed engineering technical documents that we looked at, we distilled them down into nice graphically friendly, user-friendly stuff for you guys to look at. This is a blue one, so it's in transportation. It's talking about bicycle facilities, how you could deploy a bicycle facility on your roadway network. We also uh, took the effort to make this uh, contextual based off of the functional class of the road that's on. So many of the minimum standards identified in this document, you'll have the ways that you can apply these from local road all the way up to principal arterial road. Next slide. These are some more examples. Uh, one of them purple with sense of place. This is how to deploy three trees uh, successfully in your community. Another one we look at is uh, street furniture sense of place. So if you wanna do benches or garbage cans with that, uh, it talks about when it would be appropriate to use those street elements. Uh, land use, we talk about setbacks for when you could do setbacks, depending on if you're on the back of the interstate or on a local road. Uh, all handy user stuff that you guys could have some reference material. Next slide, please. So the last thing that we do is we looked at all of the existing scheduled, slated, or dreamed up projects that could take place as a transportation project in the corridor or into the future. There are a lot of them, so we broke them into segments. Uh, segments one and segments two are what Pendleton's would be mostly concerned about. This is segment one. You can see there's a lot of them on that page. It's blue. Next slide. Orange are the ones that Pendleton is particularly, or Madison County would be concerned about. Or if you want to see what your neighbor to the north would be doing, the green section would be what Anderson is showing. Next slide. Oh, huh? yes. Oh, we don't need data analysis. We do need data analysis. Okay, this is an older version of the thing. I have some examples of data analysis in here. I'll go over briefly. Uh, this is very technical stuff, but uh, uh, that's you can go down more. Next slide. So this is an example of the land use within the corridor. Um, 
as you see on the left of the screen there, that's existing land use. We gathered all that information from all of our LBAs. On the right, we have that's the outcome of the meetings that we had with all the planning departments for what their desired future is. You can see that it's turning from green, which is all that wonderful agriculture land, to more yellow and red, which would be residential and commercial. So what does that really mean for us? Next slide. The document, we note that 33% of the land within the corridor right now is agriculture, with 20% being single-family residential, and then 14% being conservation residential, which is really large lots. Uh, but we take that and then we apply what everybody said that they wanted to do, we went to the next slide, in a program called Urban Footprint, and it tells us that roughly 4,000 acres of agricultural land is going to be consumed for the residential and commercial uh, uses that people want to see in the future. And what that means is that the corridor is projected to increase in population by 250%, and employment is going to go up by 290% is what the analysis tool tells us. Uh, it also tells us that the employment by sector is going to increase for retail by 500%. And uh, this is, I'm sorry, that is an old thing there. But retail is going to go up as well as industrial is going to go up within the document. Thank you. So moving forward, we're not asking you guys to vote on anything this evening. But what we would like you to do, please, next slide, is take the time to go and read the document. I know that it is a large document. Take the next month or so to read it. If you have any questions, we're always available. Uh, we would like to see in the future that this town, the uh, Board will adopt the Memorandum of Understanding. We're going to go to all of the communities and try to get all of them to adopt this Memorandum of Understanding that we created as part of the document. And we'd like to see the town start using this document in their standard development uh, practices. So development will come in. You look at the document. If it's within the I-69 corridor, you'll research what applicable goals and objectives and minimum standards there are. Uh, you notify your neighbor if you're going to affect something or if it's a multi-jurisdictional project. You talk to your neighbor about doing things. You go through your standard public input and then collaborate with your consultants and your neighbors involved and then enact the project. Slide. So I have here on the end, this is a QR code to the Memorandum of Understanding uh, that is in the appendix of the document. Hannah also has... Uh, printed version of that that she can give you guys to look at at your convenience. We also include here a QR code to a uh, LPA INDOT Memorandum of Understanding. This is primarily so that you can synchronize the approval processes for curb cuts on INDOT related facilities so that INDOT won't grant a curb cut without you guys also approving the curb cut first in your community, which sometimes I'm told can be a problem. Thank you very much. I will take any of your questions. Any questions for Rob? Thanks so much. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Okay, moving on, we have okay. our claims for the month of August in the Google Drive, as well as the clerk treasurer's report. Willie, was it, is there anything you'd like to add to the current treasurer's report? Uh, no, we have the uh, month ending August mm -hmm. here with the uh, general fund. You can see it's in good shape. Uh, one thing I might uh, caution you on this uh, voucher when you're looking at this, yes, these are checks we wrote, but a lot of these we will reimburse for. Man, you know, yeah. it's not all money going out. Some of it's coming back too, so. Right. Any questions for Willie regarding the claims or the clerk treasurer's report? If there aren't any questions, I'll entertain a motion for approval of the claims for the month of August. Make a motion. Second. I have a motion and a second for approval of the August claims as presented. Willie, will you lead us in a roll call vote? Steve Denny. Yes. Corey Hall. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Ryan Williams. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Okay, moving on to department reports. We will start with Chief Barr. Good evening. 
Uh, to begin the report, Heritage Fair went off smooth this year. Um, congestion's always something, small little fender benders, but overall it, it ran smoothly. Um, the big thing, and this didn't make the chatter, we had a uh, illegal speakeasy at Rollins Retirement Home. And I don't know if the photos are uploaded mm -hmm. from my report. They're uh, further down, but yeah. Are they? They're yeah. there. So we got a call from the director, Chad, and he must have been under the influence himself because he actually called to report the speakeasy um, and requested our presence. There they are. So things, <laughs> things are getting a little out of hand in the retirement village. So <laughs> upon busting in the room and announcing, uh, uh, you know, law enforcement, we asked the radio be turned down. We found roulette tables. We found one on <laughs> bandits. We found uh, wine and beer. And uh, they could care less that we were there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if you go through the photos, one lady, uh, uh, she tried to resist arrest by asking to be arrested. And uh, so we cuffed her and um, we decided to release everybody on their own recognizance. But uh, that might be where I moved to when I retired. It's so a party over there. It was a party. <laughs> yes, they did. And uh, they honestly, they didn't care that the police were busting them at all. One gentleman... The, the phrases I heard when I walked in was, you're not taking us alive. And the other guy said, I just made a wrong turn. I'm not sure even where I'm at. <laughs> it, was a, it was a good time. Yeah. Um, Farmer's Market uh, put on a first responder day. Officer E.B. and Officer Bertram went down there and sat throughout the Farmer's Market for their recognition of uh, law enforcement. That was great uh, for them to put that on for us. Fall Festival Heritage Fair Hot Wash. Hot Wash is just an after action briefing. And uh, I believe uh, Captain Trailer showed up with that with the town and, and, and Mr. Resky uh, to discuss the traffic flow from the changes that were made this year and find the positives and negatives. Um, Sons of Ambet's car show. I was requested to have the MRAP down there this year, so I, I brought it down. And we were also presented with a $5,000 check to buy new rifles. Uh, we're looking at Wes just left. He's one of my firearms guys, but we're upgrading our patrol rifles. Uh, to where we can go with a shorter barrel with uh, suppressors eventually, which makes a lot more sense when you're shooting one next to someone's head. So uh, it's gonna be a, a great piece of equipment and uh, we received $5,000 for those purchase. Um, recon e-bikes, there's also a photo in there of our new e-bikes. So way back uh, years ago, Bull Chevrolet donated a bike, I believe, and still have it upstairs. Um, and then we also have other bikes but this is the newest technology on the street. And these are e-bikes. They'll do uh, 78 miles on a charge. Uh, they're battery assisted. They're still pedal. Um, so the guys are still getting exercise, but with the assistance of the e-bike. And uh, so far they've been great. And uh, recon has been awesome. We had one problem maybe with a battery. We called them, I said, keep an eye on it and they'll just swap it out. But uh, it's an asset for the town and the department to get the guys out there. The, uh, the bikes allow for someone to be more in tune with a policeman than just hidden in a car. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's a great thing. I think myself, Stan Brown, E.B., Bertram, Lucas have all been through the bike training. So you'll see us out on them. Um, attempted murder case. So two years ago, 20, 2022, we had the uh, attempted murder case up in Carrick Glen involving a Joel Meyer. Uh, we attended court last week in Judge Sims court and uh, he asked for a bench trial and he was found guilty on all counts. So even the attempted murder and everything uh, was found guilty. So his sentencing will be coming up soon. Uh, kudos to Officer Bertram for the job he did uh, after the initial incident. Uh, myself, I think EB uh, testified uh, and uh, we won the case. So it's a good thing for the community that was getting ready. That was becoming a problem. And uh, luckily the victim in that was not killed and she's doing fine. That's a good thing. Homecoming, homecoming parade, unfortunately was canceled due to the, the uh, storm. And, uh, you know, again, there's naysayers, but I think it was the best decision made. Uh, I made the comment that chicken wire and staple guns wouldn't work with 40 mile an hour winds on the floats. Yeah, so, uh, and then I believe the school showed them off the next night at the prom was supposedly the plan. Uh, I didn't hear if that went off or not. Um, we also had a stolen vehicle pursuit come into town. We get a lot of pursuits come into town because of our five major roadways. This particular one was a truck, which was stolen, pulling a camper, which was stolen. Um, the guy eventually went into a ditch, and I think there's a picture, uh, out by McDonald's. 
uh, between the new community health building and McDonald's. He was trying to make it to the interstate, but there's another ditch he would have hit. So recovered those two vehicles. He overdosed on narcotics and was Narcan to the scene. He was tased uh, before he overdosed with the, the drugs. And then the woman who was in the back of the camper with a dog during the chase was also tased. And just for a side note, her dentures flew out. So there you go. There's a visual for you. Um, everything was recovered and, and two people went to jail. Then on the 30th, the uh, U.S. Marshals were in town. The U.S. Marshals are always in town. You just don't know they're around. Um, George Sheridan with U.S. Marshals called me. We go way back to Delaware County Muncie days, and uh, he was asking for assistance. When he found out we had an MRAP, he definitely wanted that. And um, along with Indiana State Police SWAT team, U.S. Marshals and us, uh, we converged on a house just outside the border of town. Um, Madison County SWAT team's vehicle is down right now, so they have been using us as drivers for our MRAP. That's been great. And another, I was going to give Wes a kudo. Uh, the other night, he installed a bunch of lights in it and, and a PA system and, and really upgraded the MRAP force. So it's getting a lot of use, unfortunately. Uh, but we were able to help the U.S. Marshals. The suspect they were looking for had a uh, murder count out of Ohio, shot a guy seven times, fled to Pendleton, Indiana. And uh, he'd been there. His sister was there. His phone was there. And the car that he got away from Ohio was there. But he was gone. So the belief is he left the phone, of course, because he knows we follow phones and was trying to fly. He, the word is he's trying to make it back to Mexico. So. And that is all my report, except for dispatched incidents was 1,056 for the month, um, 17 crash investigations, three warnings for local ordinances, um, Indiana code warnings was 57 with 56 citations. Adult criminal arrest, 58, and uh, one juvenile arrest. And that is my report. Questions for Mark? I do, Chief. It's not all that important, but the last thing you said was about adult arrest. Is that, I was looking at that before the meeting started, is that 58 people or 58 counts? Counts. Counts. So, mm -hmm. not so it could be, it could be, uh, it could be, let's say, a DUI resisting. Right. Right. It, it could be one adult with three charges. So it's the counts. Do you have any yeah. idea what the number? I'm, I'm sure somebody does, but do you know what the number of actual arrests were? I think well? if you go. Is it in here? The... If it's here, I'll find it. Chief. It was much guy. Yeah, one yeah. guy was yeah. 58 counts. <laughs> <laughs> well, like the guy, you're right. Like the guy in the truck would have been one. Well, we sure. wouldn't have charged that. That's not even. Yeah. Yeah. That was a, a county chase. But, uh, yeah, if you go to the the page, um, it says adult arrest charge summary. Uh, you can kind of tell. It doesn't have the individual person. That's right. But you can kind of yeah. tell, like, the case that it's involved. So, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven God. operating uh, while intoxicated. You know those are all individual ones. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. Okay. okay. And scams are still happening. So, be loud uh, to your friends and family not to fall for scams. Uh, Travis Tritt is not in jail and asking you for money. Um, what about the night that says France? So that. Travis Tritt's not in jail and asking you for money. The offshore oil rig guy <laughs> does not need $100 every other day. So please tell your people. And, and, and have them feel free to call the PD. We get those calls all the time. Hey, Mark, do you think this is a scam? So, and we go through it, figure it out. 99% they are, so... That is it. Any other questions for Mark? Nope. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Thanks, Chief. Aaron, you want the that narrowed down in the future? Yeah, I just out of curiosity, I'd like to know how many people were actually arrested. Okay. Yeah, okay. thanks, Chief. Just curiosity. Curi curiosity. Yeah. <laughs> Strictly curiosity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good evening. Hey. Uh, Boo Bash coming up. So if you haven't been, check it out. It's a good time. Um, Donnie and the guys did a really good job on the bridge. I don't know if you guys have seen it, but uh, it looks really nice. A big upgrade from what it was. I hear people are scared to walk across it now, so <laughs> that's always a good thing. Um, we had a meeting with Context about Brown's Pool and what its future will look like. So we're going to sit down and have some internal discussions on that, and then 
bring something to you. Uh, other than that, things are going well. Park is busy. Do you have any questions for me? Anything for Aaron? Park looks great here. Thank you. I wish I could take credit, but it's the guys outside. Everyone really appreciated that bridge getting turned around so quickly. So that's a huge kudos to your team. I will pass that along to everyone except Donnie. <laughs> Don't say that. Oh, no. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Aaron. Thank you. Planning department. Um. Okay. So you've got uh, our building report <laughs> sum summary in front of you. Um. In September, we gave out two more historic preservation grants. And um, one of those is for Town Hall. We are taking out the bricked in windows upstairs, as well as retuck pointing the building and also doing some structural work on the second floor. And that's not technically part of the grant because it's only for outdoor things, but, but we're really excited about that. We have our pre con with our contractors next week. So we'll get a schedule together and Move, move forward with that one when they're available. Um, with our subdivisions, uh, Baker's Point is starting um, ground moving. They, they told me this just a few days ago, so I guess it's not technically September, but um, they're going to start earth moving next week. Um, they're still coordinating a couple items with NDOT, uh, kind of like what, what Ralph was actually alluding to. Uh, there's a few issues with their entryway that they need to suss out with NDOT, but other than that, they're going to start moving their dirt for section one. Here at Glen uh, has five houses left, or if those are sold, so they will be closing up here at Glen pretty quickly here. And same for Arabian Point, Kyle has just five houses left. Most of them are in mechanical. Um, there's one in foundation right now. It's the uh, lot just north of his. At first, it was going to be a common space because it was unbuildable. And then our electric department uh, was able to move some electric lines in conjunction with another process or uh, project. So now he can build there. And then he has one lot on hold. Um, he's just keeping that one on hold for design. Uh, he wants to build something really special there. So and then our, our business park trail, we're moving really steadily with banning our consultant on that. That's going to be a really exciting project. Um, and they are just, they're trucking along. We're going to have three years of PE on that project. You know, I think it's just putting in sidewalks and trails. But it's never just that. So that's all I have. Anything for Hannah Rose? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Town Manager's Report, Scott Rusty. Good afternoon. Okay, a couple things. Um, first of all, uh, just so you know, it's one of those quiet, invisible things. Um, Jacob has, uh, because we're now under the state IoT with our emails and that sort of thing, um, has started a review process with Purdue and IU for our policies and our procedures um, for our technology. So um, very important, but very invisible, um, unless something really blows up, right? <laughs> then, uh, so Denise and I attended the AIM conference, which is uh, the old Indiana Association of Cities and Towns. The biggest thing, it was pretty funny, about seven people came up to me when they saw the name tag, because it has your name and then the town you're from. They are like, we love your farmer's market. And these were not just people who live in Fourville or whatever, all over the state. We have Southern Indiana, two from Southern Indiana say that. And I just thought that was pretty neat, you know. Um, as you can see from the photo, the cemetery paving project is done. Um, the only thing we're going to continue to do, it's sort of going to be an Aaron Oster's winter project to grade with dirt in most cases, um, so that it's a, uh, there's no drop off. You know, a lot of people when they're during a funeral, they'll park their car and they'll step off into the, to, to where the burial site is. And so we wanna get rid of that. Some places we will have to put stone, uh, but that's part of the project. Plus it helps with the life of the asphalt by packing uh, stone or uh, dirt up against the edge. All right, and it is, the road is a little bit higher. Um, and then we'll probably, 
you know, the next time it gets done, whenever it'll, we'll just keep adding that layer. Um, and then next picture. So we had a, a really good time uh, with Aaron saying goodbye to him. Uh, a lot of laughs, a lot of stories. And um, so um, his wife attended and, and uh, sort there it sort of spun into like Ricky stories, and Donnie Meyer stories. So it was it was a lot of fun and the food was great. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is I put a flyer up on your desk, Reese Across America. We have extra copies and we would like you to help recruit or if you have somebody that you would like to honor that's a veteran in our cemetery, Reese Across America. Um, the, it, the project is you put a wreath on veterans and you can donate to a specific veteran, uh, maybe a family member or somebody like that served in the military, or you can just donate us a, a certain amount of money and then um, they'll donate it to um, to uh, one of the veterans who, who doesn't have uh, maybe nobody alive, right? That's in their family anymore. But uh, it's a really good project. It was very successful last year. The deadline for ordering is November 14th. And then they do the ceremony is scheduled, the ceremony schedule for December 14th. So uh, I know I'm donating a wreath and <laughs> Two wreaths, actually. So, anyway, and then also we got awarded a uh, an invite to the Creative Convergence Workshop by the Indiana Arts Commission. Carrie will be attending that, and uh, we'll have more for that for you later on the detail and what we learned. It sets us up for hopefully some grants. Um, there was only ten communities that were awarded the invite. So hopefully there'll be 10 communities that receive a grant. So any questions? It's kind of, I may have messed up when I left the room for a second, but I just wanted to tell you, I got a real nice text this morning from a town resident thanking the town for paving the cemetery. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Thank you. And All I right. can just echo the wreaths across America presentation, even if you don't have any veterans buried um, at Grove Lawn, it's a wonderful, very somber but important ceremony and i spoke at it last year and it was great so if you have that saturday free i would encourage everyone to attend because it's just it's a really important program and it shows off our cemetery which is a really big deal we have such a nice cemetery in middleton so i'll put uh, the paperwork here if you want to donate it's right there if anybody awesome. wants to do that anything else for scott thanks thanks scott Okay, moving on to old business, budget for 2025, ordinance 2428. Since we did the public hearing on this last month, we're just now down to the, the ordinance phase of that. Any feedback or questions for the budget ordinance? Anybody online or in the public have anything they'd like to say about the budget? If there aren't any comments or changes, I would entertain a motion for approval. Make that motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? We'll second. I have a motion and a second for approval of Ordinance 2428, the budget for 2025. Willie, will you lead us in a roll call vote, please? Okay. Brian Williams. Yes. Corey Hall. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Steve Danny. Yes. Marissa Skagg. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Moving on to ordinance 2429, salary ordinance for 2025. This is the same exact thing that we presented last month on first read. So tonight is our second read on that. As I stated, no changes from what we presented last month. Notable changes um, from 2023 would be that we increased the longevity to cap out at 25 years instead of 20 years. Um, and then increases for all departments. So um, any questions for the salary ordinance? If there aren't any questions, I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll make the motions. I have a motion, do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second for approval of ordinance 2429, the salary ordinance for 2025. Willie, roll call vote. 
Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Steve Denning. Yep. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Brian Williams. Yes. Lori Hall. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. That was second read, so that's officially done. Ordinance 2417, hotels and places of public lodging. This also has not changed since last month, so we are just doing second read on this. Any questions or comments regarding Ordinance 2417, hotels and places of public lodging? If there aren't any questions, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Make the motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second for approval of Ordinance 2417 on second read. Willie, will you lead us in a roll call? Steve Danny. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Brian Williams. Yes. Corey Hall. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Motion carried on second read. Moving on to new business. First thing is Ordinance 2430, amending the speed limit. This was a request from my neighbors, I'll say that, um, out in Foster Branch Ridge regarding um, County Road 600 West, which is a dead end, and also these local neighborhood roads. Foster Branch Drive, Foster Branch Court, Lakeview Court, Fountain Court, Foster Branch or Foster Ridge Lane and Foster Ridge Court. With the impending construction of Baker's Point, they are concerned about increased traffic through both their neighborhoods and also on 600 West. And so since we have jurisdiction over those, we internally offered that the town could lower the 600 West speed limit to 35 miles per hour and those local neighborhood roads to 25. Since we're not crossing the 20 threshold, we can do that without a traffic study, correct? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Correct. Any questions or comments regarding amending the speed limits? If there aren't any questions, I'll entertain them. Should I abstain from this since I live in the general area? Not necessary. Okay. If there aren't any questions, I will entertain a motion for approval. I'll make the motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second for approval of 2430, amending the speed limits on 600 West, Foster Ridge Court, Foster Ridge Lane, Fountain Court, Lakeview Court, Foster Branch Court, and Foster Branch Drive. Roll call vote, Willie. Corey Hall. Yes. Brian Williams. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Since it's going to take us a little bit of time to get those signs in, I suggest we just do first read tonight. We'll get the signs in and then we can do second read in November. We'll have the signs ready and we can there's we can try to implement it without signs, but I don't think that ever really works out that well. So if everybody's okay, I would like to delay the second read until November. Okay. You worried about getting ticketed out there? You know, <laughs> I, it would be me. <laughs> be ironic. Yeah. Um, okay, moving on to 2431, amending the UDO. These are four amendments that went through Planning Commission and received unanimous support through their last week at their meeting. Hannah, anything you would like to add to these? No, not really. A um, couple of these are for clarifying some processes, uh, short-term short rental, so Airbnb standard and then gas station standard as well. Um, these were discussed and amended as, as discussed by the Planning Commission. And so. Any questions for Hannah? <laughs> I'll entertain a motion for approval. I'll make a motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second for second read because the first read happened at Planning Commission for Ordinance 2431 amending the UDO. Roll call, Willie. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Brian Williams. Yes. Corey Hall. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Bruce Skaggs. Yes. Great. Motion carried unanimously. Ordinance 2432, amending the zone map for PC 1002024-01 Lee Farms. I believe the petitioner is here this evening. Yeah. Um, Hannah, would you like to walk the council through this? Sure. Um, so this was uh, a petitioner who wanted to parcel off two pieces of property from two pieces of property. Yeah, this is a good place to stop. Um, 
but the current zoning is for large lot agriculture. It is a active farm right now. Um, there are two home sites existing on one on each property. Uh, so basically they wanted to parcel off some pieces for those home sites, uh, but to do so, unless they cut it at 40 acres, which is the minimum lot size for large lot ag, they have to, to change the zoning. So that's really all that this does um, to be able to parcel off a north and a south parcel, um, as well as some road right of way for the town and uh, allow those two home sites to each have their own parcel ID. Okay. Any questions? So these will be rural residential. There aren't any questions. Um, this has already been through planning commission. So we will be the second vote or the second read on this. So um, I will entertain a motion if there aren't any questions. We'll make a motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A second. I have a motion and a second for approval of ordinance 2432 okay. amending the zone map, Lee Farms. Roll call, Lily. Corey Hall. Yes. Brian Williams. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Marissa Skagg. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. Moving on to 2433, amending the access control management ordinance. This looks very similar to our UDO amendments that we are very familiar with. These also have been through planning commission and had a unanimous recommendation to come to town council. Hannah, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, so this was just a couple more clarification amendments um, to our access management ordinance. Um, sometimes if you don't live and breathe these documents every day, they can be really hard to interpret from the outside looking in. Um, so we we try to make it as user friendly as possible. So some of those things included this process clarification, definition clarification, landscaping, stuff like that that wasn't really included in there. So just clearing it up a little bit. Any questions for Hannah? Okay, I'll entertain a motion for approval. Make a motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second for approval of ordinance 2433, amending the access control management ordinance. Willie, roll call vote, please. Brian Williams. Yes. Corey Hall. Yes. Jerry Burmeister. Yes. Steve Denny. Yes. Marissa Skaggs. Yes. Motion carried unanimously. We have finished old and new business. I will now entertain public comment. There isn't any public comment. Any comments from anybody up here? Town's doing a good job. Keep it up. Okay. If there aren't any questions, comments, or concerns, I will make a motion to adjourn at 649.